Today's session is going to give you a very brief overview of communication development as well as some of the tools and strategies we use with children and adults with a whole range of abilities. One of the key essentials in working with people to develop multimedia self-advocacy is communication. If we truly want to be person-centred, then we need to understand what the person is communicating to us, whether that be through body language, facial expressions, vocalisations or the spoken word. It's useful for us to know how we develop language so that we can understand how to adapt our communication to support people who might have a different cognitive level of understanding. So how do we develop communication? Well, from when we're born to about five months old, we're at a pre-intentional stage of communication. This is where we're building up a picture of the world around us through our senses, through smell, touch, sound. We're also responding to internal messages. So we're hungry, we cry. So you may be working with someone at this level. They have profound and multiple learning difficulties. This is where using multimedia self-advocacy and person-centered approaches can be extremely effective. Observing and really trying to read and understand the vocalisations, body movements, facial expressions someone is using is one of the most important things we can do at this stage. Using video allows us the time to really understand and interpret the messages, just as we do when we're interacting with a baby. Using the wiki is a really brilliant way of sharing these messages with everyone. For example, I worked with a young girl who, after a period of observing her, we worked out that if she moved her tongue around her mouth, she was hungry. But if she moved her tongue straight, poking in and out of her mouth, she was thirsty. So by sharing that with everyone, it meant that everyone could respond and give her a drink when she was thirsty or food when she was hungry. At around five to eight months, we're starting to anticipate what's going to happen. We're beginning to remember and recognise things. I hear Dad, I smell him, I'm going to get picked up. When we're working with someone at this level, it's really important that we continue to observe so that we can help them anticipate what's going to happen next. I smell food, here's your spoon, it's lunchtime. We are also developing cause and effect. So this is I do something and something happens. It might be both with adults and people, so peekaboo games, or with objects. From around 8 to 12 months, we move into intentional communication. We know if I cry, someone's going to come, or I can play a game, drop something on the floor because I know this adult's going to pick it up for me. I also understand what I want and what I don't want. At this stage, we're not using words to convey messages, but we're using vocalisations, gestures, body movements. It's really important when we're working with someone at this level that we are continuing to observe so that we can help them to get these messages across. Someone might be eye pointing at the window because they want to go outside, or they could be um, vocalising, which means they're in pain and we could easily miss something. We then move on to speech. Words and ideas normally develop around 12 to 18 months. Be aware that some people might have processing difficulties, so the time it takes them to understand the spoken word. That's where using a visual or a photograph could be really helpful. We say the word cat, it's gone. <coughs> But if we show them a picture, it's there until they understand what we've said. Also, they could have social difficulties. So they could have real trouble understanding facial expressions or body language. We also might be working with children or adults with physical disability who might have a very good understanding but lack the ability to actually express themselves. Have a watch of Harry's wiki. This shows a video of him having a really nice conversation with a staff member where he only has a yes and a no to respond. I want to ask a question. Right. What's your question? Let's go to your topic group. A quick conversation. It's a conversation. Hello. Hello. Conversational. Uh, what did you do last night? What did you do over the weekend? 
what did I do over the weekend? Um, well, I watched England play. I went to a barbecue. Ooh, yeah. And we lost. Uh, but it was still, still good fun. And the barbecue was nice. When someone has these other difficulties, this is when there's a whole range of communication tools and strategies that can be very effective. When we have a physical disability, it really decreases our opportunities to explore and make sense of the world around us. Play is essential for us to develop our understanding in language. Watch Harry's wiki again. He has a yes, he makes a kissing sound, and a no, he pokes his tongue out. Imagine how useful the wiki is to show these short videos so that when new staff come into the school or he joins a new club, they can watch this and understand how he can respond very quickly. Can you show me a yes, Harry? Again? Show me a no, Harry. For many people, the spoken word has very little meaning. Often people say, oh no, they really understand what I'm saying. But actually, they're reading your body language, your tone of voice, your facial expressions, or they're used to certain routines. Watch this clip and see if you can understand what this person is saying. <laughs> ਹੁਨੇ ਉਰੇ ਸੀ ਹੁਣ ਪਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਿੱਥੇ ਗਈ ਕਾਲੇ ਰੰਗ ਦੇ ਆ ਉਹਦਾ ਨਾਮ ਕੋਕੋ ਆ ਇੰਨੀ ਵੱਡੀ ਆ ਕੋਈ ਮੇਰੀ ਮਦਦ ਕਰੂਗਾ ਡਿਡ ਯੂ ਅੰਡਰਸਟੈਂਡ ਐਨੀਥਿੰਗ ਕੁਡ ਯੂ ਵਰਕ ਆਊਟ ਐਨੀਥਿੰਗ ਫਰਮ ਫੇਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਐਕਸਪ੍ਰੈਸ਼ਨਸ ਟੋਨ ਆਫ ਵੋਇਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਬਲੀ ਨਾਟ ਇਫ ਯੂ ਡਿਡਨਟ ਅੰਡਰਸਟੈਂਡ ਥੈਟ ਲੈਂਗੁਏਜ ਵਾਚ ਦ ਕਲਿਪ ਅਗੇਨ ਐਂਡ ਸੀ ਵਾਟ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਵਰਕ ਆਊਟ ਕੋਈ ਹੈਗਾ ਮੇਰੀ ਮਦਦ ਕਰਨ ਨੂੰ ਮੇਰਾ ਕੁੱਤਾ ਘੁੰਮ ਗਿਆ ਹੁਨੇ ਉਰੇ ਸੀ ਹੁਣ ਪਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਿੱਥੇ ਗਈ ਉਹਦਾ ਨਾਮ ਕੋਕੋ ਆ ਉਹ ਕਾਲੇ ਰੰਗ ਦੀ ਆ ਤੇ ਇੰਨੀ ਵੱਡੀ ਆ ਐਦਾਂ ਦੀ ਲੱਗਦੀ ਆ ਕੋਈ ਮੇਰੀ ਮਦਦ ਕਰੂਗਾ What do you think now this time we can see that the person's in a park actually we hear a little bit of distress in their voice something's wrong um maybe you've worked it out maybe not watch again ਕੋਈ ਹੈਗਾ ਮੇਰੀ ਮਦਦ ਕਰਨ ਨੂੰ ਮੇਰਾ ਕੁੱਤਾ ਘੁੰਮ ਗਿਆ ਹੁਨੇ ਉਹਨੇ ਸੀ ਹੁਣ ਪਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਿੱਥੇ ਗਈ ਉਹਦਾ ਨਾਮ ਕੋਕੋ ਆ ਕਾਲੇ ਰੰਗ ਦੀ ਆ ਤੇ ਇੰਨੀ ਵੱਡੀ ਆ ਐਦਾਂ ਦੀ ਲੱਗਦੀ ਆ ਕੋਈ ਮੇਰੀ ਮਦਦ ਕਰੂਗਾ ਸੋ ਨਾਉ ਵੀਵ ਸੀਨ ਅ ਪਿਕਚਰ ਆਫ ਹਰ ਡੌਗ ਐਂਡ ਆਈ ਥਿੰਕ ਵੀਵ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਬਲੀ ਗੈਸ ਥੈਟ ਸ਼ੀ ਇਜ਼ ਲੋਸਟ ਹਰ ਡੌਗ ਵੀ ਵਰਕ ਥੈਟ ਆਊਟ ਥਰੂ ਹਰ ਟੋਨ ਆਫ ਵੋਇਸ ਹਰ ਫੇਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਐਕਸਪ੍ਰੈਸ਼ਨਸ ਬੋਡੀ ਮੂਵਮੈਂਟਸ ਇਨ ਅ ਵਿਜ਼ੂਅਲ ਅ ਪਿਕਚਰ ਆਫ ਹਰ ਡੌਗ ਇਟ ਇਜ਼ ਸੇਡ ਥੈਟ ਵਰਡਸ ਮੇਕ ਅਪ ਥ ਸਮਾਲੈਸਟ ਪਾਰਟ ਆਫ ਹਾਊ ਵੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਕੇਟ 55% is the body language that we use, 38% is the tone of voice, and only 7% is the actual words that we use. What do we take from this? Well, it's necessary for us to really think about our own body language, facial expressions, vocalizations, the pace in which we interact. It's therefore important we use a total communication. That simply means using a communication system that is accessible to that person. That might mean using facial expressions, body language, visuals, signs, devices of some sort. Whatever communication system the person uses should be available at all times, but it might mean they also use a combination of systems. So they might have a high-tech device, something like an iPad that they're using, but when they go to the pool, they might have a communication book instead. Again, the wiki is a fantastic tool to ensure that these communication systems are shared with everyone, home, school, residential. It's also a great way to share between multidisciplinary teams. For example, Harry's wiki, when he first got it and put his communication on there, his speech language therapist didn't realize that he had a sign for fed up. Harry, can you show me your sign for fed up, please? There you go. You're touching your eyes. 
So when using visual support, it's really important to think about the cognitive level or sensory impairment of the person. We talk about a visual ladder when we're talking about the different stages of supports and I'm going to talk you through that now. So at the bottom of the ladder, we're at the pre-object stage, we're at the pre-intentional communication. So this is where we're working very sensory. So we might be using touch cues, where someone touches you on the shoulder, which means I'm going to sit down. We might be using smells and sounds to indicate different routines of the day. We're looking at body language and facial expressions. If you haven't heard of a system called intensive interaction, look it up. It's one of the best tools you can use when you're working with someone at this level. Also, we can use lots of sensory activities or things like TACPAC, which is another great tool for running sessions with people using a range of sensory activities. Again, this is where the wiki is a really brilliant tool for showing how to support someone at this level. It could be a little clip of video that shows I turn my head to the left, I make a groaning sound which means I don't like something. We now move up the ladder to real objects and we often call this objects of reference and these are usually used in transition. So I give you a spoon, I know I'm going to the kitchen or I'm going to the dining room to have lunch. I give you your swimming costume, I know that I'm going to the swimming pool to go swimming. What's really key with objects of reference is consistency. So that that person always gets the object when they're going to have that particular activity. Imagine how useful the wiki is to actually share what these objects are so that they get consistency everywhere they go. So the person might be using signs and gestures as well. We then move on to photographs and these slowly replace the objects which means that we can start to widen the selection and option that people have. So they might have photographs of places that they're going or activities that they enjoy so they can make choices. At this stage, we might be introducing some technology as well, some simple recordable switches or a very simple choosing grid on an iPad. So from photographs, we then move into using line drawings or symbols. And it's really important to remember to teach a transition between those stages. Also remember that a line drawing can be just as abstract as the written word. Have a look at this symbol. Do you know what it means? I didn't understand what it was. It's actually therapist. So you can see how abstract some of the symbols can be. Often people provide symbols thinking that they're being very helpful. But unless you're at the cognitive level of understanding, then they're actually as abstract as using the written word. Be aware of other sensory impairments as well. Someone might have a visual difficulty like Harry, so he needs to auditory scan his messages. Or might have a hearing impairment, so they're developing sign. When moving on to using the written or spoken word, remember those people that have processing difficulties or people with autism, they can take what you say very literally. So you might say it's raining cats and dogs and they might expect to see cats and dogs coming down from the sky. Also, they might have a great deal of difficulty understanding and interpreting body language. So your expectation that someone would look at you or get your attention might be a really difficult thing for some people. It can be really helpful to really simplify your language that you're using. So now we understand the communication system the person's using and when they like to use it. Now we really need to think about the reasons and the opportunities we give them to practice those systems. So there might be someone that's using photographs to choose a snack that they're having at school. We use the wiki to put that on so that at home they can practice the same thing. When we're aware of the communication systems and needs of the individual, we need to make sure that they're available all the time. Everyone has the right to communicate, even if that means I make sucking sounds and I'm thirsty. Mm -hmm.